So I just got done with a live stream uh, where we talked a lot about Age of Calamity. And we're going to be talking about Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity tonight on the podcast at 8 p.m. Central Time. Uh, it'll be about an hour-long podcast. Uh, we have a returning guest coming back uh, specifically to talk about Zelda. So expect a lot of Zelda goodness. In fact, expect a lot of Zelda goodness for a while. Uh, but we are going to have a little conversation here. And I have a question for you guys. Uh, and we can have this debate and conversation down in the this, uh, down in the comment section. And I would say that because, hey, commenting is cool. I love conversing with you guys. I love seeing what you have to say. And commenting is a way to enter our giveaways. Uh, we have a giveaway going on for a Switch Lite. And then uh, two second place winners each get a game of choice from Nintendo Switch, Switch's library, whatever game they feel like, physical or digital. Uh, to enter, go down in the description. There's a whole bunch of different ways. Subscribing to the channel is, is the primary method, but there's other ways to enter as well. Uh, and then we also given away three copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars in a second giveaway. Uh, there's a Gleam.io link for that. Also, if you join our Patreon at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime for as little as $1 a month, you get 15 entries into every giveaway we do. Okay, cool. That's cool. All that's done. Giveaway stuff out of the way. Let's get into this. Um, yeah. Who saw? Who thought we were getting a, a, a prequel for Breath of the Wild? Like, we knew we were getting the Breath of the Wild sequel. Who who really thought we were getting a prequel, let alone a Hyrule Warriors prequel for Breath of the Wild? I'm 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 so excited. So, is this going to be the darkest Zelda game ever? Is this going to be uh, the most mature Zelda game ever? Now we've seen T for Teen. We know this is rated T for Teen, so we know it's dark. We know it's we, we know it's um, violent, right? Warriors games are, are violent by nature. But is it going to be the darkest Zelda ever? Because think about what we know, okay? We, we don't experience a lot of these things in Zelda. Um, and the things I'm talking about, of course, are loss. We don't experience a loss in a Zelda game very often. But think about what we already know. Because of Breath of the Wild, we know some things. Because Breath of the Wild took place in an apocalyptic world, there were a lot of horrible things that happened in the past that we don't personally experience. Example. All the champions are in this game. They're playable, not as spirits, but as themselves. We know the champions die. We know it. We know Rivali. We know Urbosa. We know Mifa. We know Daruk. We know these champions do not survive the Age of Calamity. We know it. We are, this is a fact. It's already written in the history of Hyrule. We know that these characters don't survive. We know they die. We have a hint at how they die, but we don't see them die. We have, we have no idea you know, exactly how it goes down, what exactly kills them. We don't know. We know that Link almost dies. We see little bits and pieces of this in, through um, some memories in Breath of the Wild, but we don't see exactly what happens. We know he's carried off to a pool by by Impa. But we don't know we don't know how badly damaged is he? How how close to death was Link? Why is Zelda crying? At the end of the trailer, if you stick around to the very end, which why won't you? It's a pretty short trailer, a couple minutes. Zelda cries. Why? Does she think it's not going to work? Is she crying at the uh, at, at the champions dying? Is she crying at Link almost dead? Is she crying at um, the use of her her Triforce power to hold hold Calamity again? Like what? This game is part of Zelda history. This game is lore. Okay, unlike Hyrule Warriors and other spinoff games in the past, this game is actually factually part of the of, of the timeline. And there's been a lot of really super sad events that have happened in the timeline, like the Imprisoning War. But we never get to experience those events in game. We are getting to experience the Age of Calamity, and we already know death is a big part of it. We know the king dies. Zelda's father dies. Okay? This is not the Wind Waker, where Zelda's father, the first time we ever even see the king of Hyrule, becomes the king of Red Lions. Right? Magically becomes the king, king of Red Lions after Hyrule's flooded. We know that he's not dead because he still exists in the game in a different form. We know the king dies because the king is a ghost in Breath of the Wild. A ghost that can somehow take on a physical form, unlike the other champions, can take on a physical form. Don't know why that's possible either, by the way. Do we find out why the king is different? Why the king can take on a physical form in Breath of the Wild? Do we figure that out in this game? But we know the king dies. There is death and destruction all over the Age of Calamity. 
And I got to tell you, I think it's going to be hard to stomach for some people. These are some characters, champions in particular, that we have grown very attached to in Breath of the Wild. And it's possible the champions aren't even present in Breath of the Wild too because they're already dead. So they were, cha- they were present in Breath of the Wild because they were a key part of the story. They were a key part of... Um, you know, the giant behemoths, you know, the divine beasts and all that. Like, they were a key part of the lore and the history and, and, and sorting everything out. But you kind of put them at rest at, at the end of the game. So we're attached to these characters. We see some of their memories. Um, you know, we see we get to see Prince Sidon, you know, like Mipha's brother as a, as a little young in in the DLC. Like, we get attached to these characters and now we get to get even more attached to these characters with more cutscenes, more voice acting, more story at a time when they were at the height of their powers and abilities. But we know they're going to die. And maybe this is a good reason for us to have a really dark story, a really dark Zelda game. Because... The audience, I think, for Zelda is more mature than it's ever been. I have seen more mature debates around Breath of the Wild than I've seen of any Zelda game ever. And part of that's just because it's the most popular game. But it's popular among adults. If you own a PlayStation 4, you probably also own Breath of the Wild. I mean, not all of you do, of course. There's 100 million. There's only like 20 million copies of Breath of the Wild sold. But you get my point. Like, People are buying this game. People are enjoying this game and people get connected to these characters and now we get a chance to get even more connected when we already know they're going to die. I think it's going to make their deaths, even though we know it's going to happen, that much harder to stomach. Now, it's not the first time we deal with death in Zelda, of course. Majora's Mask, I think to this day, most people can agree, is maybe the darkest Zelda game. The whole game's theme is built around death. It's built around an apocalyptic event uh, you know, with the moon crashing into Termina. You know, there was that theory for a long time where Link is dead the whole time. E.J. E. Nome would toss that theory in, in the garbage can. Link is not dead in Majora's Mask. But um, sorry to burst the bubble for people who love that theory. That, 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 E.J. Nome would disprove that theory himself personally, um, addressed it. Like, he actually personally addressed the fan theory and threw it in the garbage. So, um, but uh, it, it's... That's a game that's been the closest and the darkest that's dealt with death. Because usually when we talk about dark, we're, we're talking about death. This is going to have a lot of death in this game. And I'm actually really cool with that. I'm kind of excited for it in a way, strangely. Because I like games that tackle hard things head on. Hard things we know happened, but we never had to experience. We know the champions died. We know the king died. We know Link almost died. We know this stuff happened, but we didn't have to really live it because we were living in the aftermath of it. We weren't going through it. Now we get to go through it in a game that's going to make us more connected to these characters than we've ever been. It's going to be crazy. I'm just telling you, this is going to be absolutely nuts. So I ask you guys, are you prepared for the darkest Zelda of all time? Because this is the canon Zelda game. No, it's not traditional Zelda, but it's a canon part of the timeline. It is an official prequel to Breath of the Wild, which makes a sequel plus Breath of the Wild into a trilogy. We have a trilogy on our hands. We also happen to have the darkest Zelda story of all time playing out in front of us. November 20th is going to be exciting. But don't be surprised to see some reactions to certain cutscenes and certain things that happen. See some tears come to people's eyes. In fact... When I stream the game, be prepared. My, I might get emotional. I'm already I'm already getting emotional just thinking about the stream. So, you guys let me know what you think about this. How cool are you with this dark story? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think they're going to change the story and no one's going to die? You know, are they going to retcon the Breath of the Wild story? Remember, the Zelda team wrote it. So, I don't know how much retconning you're going to see here. But, thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to stop by our stream tonight. And I'll catch you in the next video.